the umpires meeting at home plate with manager Buck Rogers and they will be tonight behind the plate Ed Montague at first base Steve Ripley Freddie Brocklander will be at second and the man with his back to you the biggest of the group Lee Wire he will be at third base and Lee of course is the crew chief of this umpiring crew series all even one game apiece after Montreal won the opener eight to six on Thursday night and the Reds came back to beat Buck Rogers ball club three two last night their sixth win in the nine games played so far on this road trip and I want to correct myself six one run wins in a row rather than seven but still very impressive Pete Rose pleased with the recent play of his ball club and of course they need a win tonight to remain five and a half games behind both the Giants and the Astros who both played this afternoon and both came away with wins Houston beating Philadelphia and the Giants prevailing over the Pittsburgh Pirates at Candlestick Park nevertheless the Reds uh, with a win could move to within one half game Steve Fiziak of the fourth place Atlanta Braves and uh, well you got to climb them one at a time and that's what the Reds are trying to do that's certainly the case in Atlanta just playing some very very poor baseball right now their pitching staff is really trouble and the Reds trying to catch up their pitching has been very fine lately despite the injuries to Bodie as to Davy Concepcion along with Tracy Jones but the Reds have been playing some fine baseball lately and as you talked about earlier with Pete Rose he said seven and four would be outstanding six wins would even be great well, right now they have the six wins with two to play here's a look at the defense for the Montreal Expos and two former Reds in the Expos defense tonight Wayne Krinchicki over at first base Vance Laws at second Hubie Brooks at shortstop Tim Wallach is the third baseman Tim Raines in left field George Wright the former Texas Ranger takes over for Mitch Webster who gets a day off Andre Dawson is in right field and behind the plate Dan Villardello you remember him as a catcher last year with Cincinnati on the mound Dennis Martinez and this is the Cincinnati lineup that Dennis Martinez will face Eddie Milner will lead things off He'll be followed by Pete Rose Dave Parker to hit third Eric Davis will bat cleanup then Buddy Bell Kurt Stilwell in his second straight start Sal Butera Ron Oster and John Denny there's Dennis Martinez well he is making his third National League start in his sixth appearance for the Expo since being acquired from the Orioles on June 16th his last outing was not very strong as all you see his earned run average 8.68 Well, he was bombed by Houston two home runs in five innings he allowed six runs in the final score was 12 one he has uh, been a man who has given up a lot of home runs 29 last year four already in 18 innings this year now as the 31 year old right hander warms up we remind you this copyrighted telecast comes to you through the courtesy of multimedia broadcasting authorized under television rights granted by the Cincinnati Reds solely for the entertainment of our audience in any publication reproduction or other use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds is prohibited Dennis Martinez only 31 years old yet in his 10th year in the major leagues he surfaced with Baltimore coming out of Rochester where he was a big winner in 1976 for the Rochester Red Wings of the International League pitched at the tail end of the 76 campaign for the Orioles and uh, has been to the big leagues ever since except for a two game stint six years ago with Miami at that time a class A affiliate of the Orioles in the Florida State League when he was having shoulder problems and trying to come back which he was successfully able to do but Dennis Martinez the kind of guy who seems to have been around forever and uh, when someone says he's only 31 years old the normal reaction is one of surprise because he came up at such a young age and has managed to hang around. He's ready to go to work against Eddie Milner, batting 232. And the first pitch taken for a ball in this game is underway. While Martinez threw a fastball to Milner, the Reds are expecting to see basically breaking balls tonight from this right hander who has been a 16 game winner in the big leagues three times. Swing at a miss and the count evens at one ball, one strike. Well, Buck Rogers hoping to get better outings out of Dennis Martinez than uh, he has in the first two times he's been out as a starter as Steve pointed out he has been racked over the cold and ahead on Milner now on the foul back well I asked Pete Rose before the ball game would you want Eddie Milner to really take a few pitches to let you understand what he has to throw and he says well really I've seen him before in all-star games and in spring training so too has Eddie Milner one ball two strikes Danny Billardello working behind the plate. Mike Fitzgerald getting an evening off and 
Martinez ready to work again. Two and two to Eddie Milner. Interesting, the one guy not in the lineup and, of course, not with the ball club after suffering the broken left hand Thursday night, Davey Concepcion homered off Dennis Martinez in an all-star game here in Olympic Stadium. And it holds at two balls and two strikes. Pete Rose basically staying with this lineup as he waits to bat next. Of course, you can't control the injury factor, and that's the thing that the Reds have really had to contend with on this road trip. Tracy Jones, Bo Diaz going down, although not on the DL, unable to play. And Milner opens things with a flare, and he's aboard. In his last appearance, Dennis Martinez, they clocked his fastball. The highest it was thrown was 85 miles an hour. And Pete Rose was saying he really has to get his breaking stuff over because if you look for the fastball, you will be able to hit it. Eddie Milner is a direct fastball hitter. And he's able to nail one to center field here. But he seems like Dennis Martinez might be in between a control pitcher and a power pitcher. A power pitcher that has lost some of his old power and a control pitcher that sometimes has lost some of his old control. He'll drive Milner back, Eddie, with eight stolen bases and 14 attempts, but it has been a long time between drinks of water for Eddie Milner in terms of a stolen base. In fact, his last steal was on the 21st of June against the Atlanta Braves. Rose taking a pitch and will probably give Eddie a few pitches in which to make up his mind. Do I run on Dennis Martinez or do I stay? And talking about the injury situation, the upside is that Discussing uh, particularly Bo Diaz and Tracy Jones with trainer Larry Starr earlier tonight. He expects both of them to be available when the Reds come off the three-day All-Star break. In fact, he thinks Diaz will be ready to go back behind the plate. Tracy Jones, he said he might not be 100%, but would be available in all likelihood to pinch hit. That's one of those situations you ask Tracy Jones, are you ready? And <laughs> he'll always say he could be on crutches in a wheelchair with a bandage on his head, and he will give you that answer. Of course, he also said tonight when Pete said, uh, <laughs> how, how about oh, working out funny. at third base? No way in the world. He is not interested. He said he spent 10 games playing third when he was in the minor leagues in the Reds organization at Cedar Rapids. And I know he exaggerated when he said he made 25 errors in 10 games, but has no desire to go back to that position. And he also added to that by saying, I think I cost my team 10 wins with my defense over third base. And he was simply amazed the way Pete Rose was able to play all those years at second, third in the outfield, first base, everywhere, and make the all-star team and wind up hitting well. Because Tracy says, when my defense goes bad, I start thinking about it. <laughs> Milner aboard. 1-0 and oh, and Pete waiting on the next pitch. And there's the continued attention. And he went over there one time more, and it pays off for Martinez in the Expo. Martinez has a very quick move not a great move to home plate and an easy play to steal on but you see Milner can't get that right hand back in time and Krinchicki falling over him is able to put the tag down and get number 20. I'll tell you Wayne Krinchicki made a heck of a play on that throw that's the kind that can result in a wild one. Here's a line drive and a nice play by the center fielder George Wright as he takes one away from Pete Rose. Rose hits one that's really bending away from George Wright, and he's able to get it right at the toe tops. That is an outstanding catch for a guy who just came over from the American League. And here's Rose again going the opposite way and gets robbed from base hit number 40. It almost was trapped, but it looked like Wright was able to pull it away. What did that look like a short hop catch to me? I don't know. It looked like he had his glove really dragging on the field. Maybe he did. Here's Dave Parker with two men out. 284 batter, 16 home runs, and of course the club leading 55 RBIs. Let's see if Wright can run this one down. He will, and the inning is over, but the Reds hit three pretty good shots off Martinez in the top of the first inning. Hopefully that's an indication of things to come. After a half inning of baseball in game three, the Reds nothing, and the Expos are coming to bat. 
same defense for Cincinnati as they had last night. Pete Rose at first, Ron Oster second, Kurt Stillwell at short, and Buddy Bell at third. Eric Davis is in the outfield and left field. Eddie Milner in center, Dave Parker in right, and Sal Butera behind the plate. Now for Montreal, their offensive lineup has Tim Raines in left field leading things off. Then it's Vance Law, Andre Dawson, and Hubie Brooks. Tim Wallach hits in the number five position. Wayne Krinchicki sixth. George Wright in the number seven position, Dan Villadello, and then Dennis Martinez. On the mound, John Denny's making his fourth try for his sixth win of the year for the first time since June 22nd. That's his last victory. Denny has a 3 2 7 earned run average in those last eight starts, allowing 20 earned runs in 55 innings. But he has been the recipient of some misfortune lately. Most of the misfortune has been lack of run production. Mm -hmm. You got to have those runs to win, and Denny seems to be the guy that the Reds have the toughest time scoring for, at least of late. Tim Raines leading it off. He'll be on the National League All Star team come Tuesday night when they square off against the American League in Houston. He is having an outstanding season, and Denny quickly in front, or evens the count rather, at one ball and one strike. Another way to look at uh, the recent work of John Denny. Steve pointed up only one win in his last five starts with two losses and two no decisions. The Reds have won nine out of his last 13 starts. And while he hasn't gotten credit for but one of those wins, nevertheless, he has been pitching well enough to, uh, and you talk to any manager, he'll tell you the same thing. I want a guy who will keep us in the game. And Denny, for the most part, has been able to do that. Quality starts, huh? Yes, sir. Your favorite statistic. I don't exactly agree with the... The definition, as Ben Scully pointed up last year during the postseason playoffs, six innings uh, and six innings or more, three runs or less. Because as I pointed out before, if you go six innings and give up three runs, that's a 450 earned run average. And uh, as they say down in my South homeland, that ain't going to get it. <laughs> it's going to send you back to the minors after a couple of unless you get months. a whole bunch of runs when uh -huh. you go out and pitch. Well, that's talking about Dennis Martinez last year. Look he at his lifetime earned run average. Check that out. It's over four in his career. But he was the number one recipient of offense a year ago, Dennis Martinez. That's why you can have a four earned run average in your career and be a winning pitcher. He had a five last year and won 13, yep. lost 11. 3 2 pitch coming to Reigns. Stillwell will have to get that cannon in order, and he does, and just got him, and Reigns not happy about the call from Steve Ripley. You saw Reigns jump up and down when Ripley gave the out call and you knew it was going to be close because of the way the ball was hit. The fact that Stillwell had to lay back on it, he didn't charge it, and he really has to air this throw out to get the out call. Was he out? He was not. Reigns looked like he had the left foot there, and Kurt really had to wait for the ball to come to him rather than charge it and try and take it on the short hop. My goodness, with Tim Reigns, sometimes you have to take those gambles. He was able to have this one pay off. Here's Vance Law now again playing second base tonight. 209 average three homers and 29 RBIs for the veteran law. After we see what Vance does we'll take a look again at that first inning catch of George Wright on the sinking line drive off the bat of Pete Rose. Here it is. Did he trap it or did he make the catch. Oh my he trapped it. I thought that glove may have been dragging there no, and it was he, popped right in but it sure did look like a trap there. He trapped the ball. So we've had two fine calls here by this fine umpiring crew. and We've not even gotten through an inning yet. This is a dandy now. Although with all due respect Fred Brocklander at second base a good umpire. The guy at first that's another story. Old Steve Ripley believe it or not. <laughs> oh two pitch and it's in the dirt. A group of us were sitting around Sal Butera Wade Rodden, Tracy Jones Billy DeMars and talking about this crew. They also like Ed Montague who works behind good home plate. Lee Wire is uh, a good umpire. Actually this guy here at first base is the only weak link. I was going to say there was much conversation about Mr. Ripley. There, are, there should be. But the conversation is not coming from the right sources. I like Buck Rogers comment in the paper this morning. As you take a look at Andre Dawson and of course in the background Vance Law waiting on John Denny's next pitch. Full count, as Buck pointed up, and it has a lot of validity to it. Uh, you can move players up and down based on their ability or or inability to play. But with a player, the umpires union being what it is today, hit it well but foul. 
once they get uh, tenure up here, they spent a few years, there is nothing you can do with them. I mean, they have such a strong union, and you got to give them credit for having that kind of organization to, ba to back them, but there's really nothing you can do about an incompetent umpire or a guy who might be overmatched. And there seems to be a great inequity there based on what you can do with a player and what you can't do with umpires. Billy DeMars was talking yesterday, the Reds' third base coach and hitting instructor. He said, maybe take a poll of all the managers and players and have two umpires per year sent down to the minor leagues, the ones who got the lowest total of votes. And then they'd have to work their way up. But just having that in the back of their minds would make, perhaps make the umpires concentrate that much more. Well, the big thing you hear from most managers, and I think when you hear enough of them say it, and Law's on with a one-out walk, they don't bear down hard enough anymore. And I'm not saying this is a blanket indictment. There are good umpires in the National League, but it's unfortunate that there seems to be a growing number who really don't work as hard, don't feel pressure enough to excel as you did a few years ago. And that seems to be an ongoing problem, and uh, it may well be a problem that they're going to have to live with. Well, it's good Mr. That we Ripley. It's good that we mentioned the good ones also. Uh, Ed Montague, Dutch Rennert was high among the guys who were visiting the other night. Well, they got the force play, but they could not get the double play. The ball was not hit all that hard, but they knock off the lead runner, Vance Law, Buddy Bell to Ronnie Oster. Boy, does Buddy Bell get rid of that baseball so quickly. He has to be on it right now to catch Tim Raines. Andre Dawson's, but look at the release from the glove to the hand and then out of there and to catch the very quick Vance Law. Here comes Hubie Brooks now with two men out. We're in no score in the bottom of the first inning. 53 RBIs. He's homered 14 times. He's batting 337. He, too, without question, is an all-star. Did he go? He, he did. Steve Ripley strikes again. It's amazing that a man can evoke so much anger and exert so little physical <laughs> exertion. It's amazing. Brooks down a strike. He's striking that classic pose right there. Ready to go to war. Dawson has stolen eight bases. He is not one of the fellas you most have to be concerned with on this Montreal club. Of course, Reigns in a very unique class. And we've already seen him here in the first. One ball, one strike. One of the outstanding trades, getting this guy over from the New York Mets. Of course, Gary Carter has done well for the Mets without any question, now leading the league and runs batted in. But uh, Hubie Brooks has simply fulfilled all of the potential that so many people in that Mets organization talked of when he was with the New York Ball Club and coming over here and for whatever the reasons might be getting out of the pressure cooker that is New York and no matter what sports you might play in. But I'll tell you one thing. He can do everything. How about three of the four guys they got in the deal? Floyd Yeomans, right. Mike Fitzgerald, both starters. And Yeomans has really taken over the ace of this stamp role. Well, it was a great trade. Came close to getting Andre Dawson. Denny's last outing was against the Mets four days ago. Worked six innings in that one, giving up five hits and three runs, only two earned. And that was uh, one of the more memorable wins by the Reds this season. Delayed steal by Dawson. He caught them all napping. He gets his ninth stolen base of the season. And boy, he earned that one because he lulled them all to sleep and then took off. Well, here's Sal taking the pitch out and really catching Dawson in between and then he kind of checks his throw there a little bit and nobody was at second base Ron Oster was a guy who went to sleep quicker than anybody because he failed to break until it was too late he must have thought that Dawson was heading back to first base so now Montreal got to be hoping for a hit from Brooks but boy you talk about a jam job and here comes a youngster and that's all for Montreal Kurt Stillwell getting a a workout here in the first inning. And for the Expos, no runs, no hits, and one left. We played an inning. And the Reds and the Expos are nothing, nothing. Hey, 
In the miners, you must have called it all a thousand times. Then one day, you got the call. What's this, rookie umpire? Clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Compliment to that gentleman. This bar's for you. Let's go. Keep down. Sunday, the battlefields of Vietnam explode. Funny thing. Fella takes one of these into battle, and by the grace of God, he comes out in one piece. Carries a strange sense of guilt all the rest of his life. John Wayne stars in the tale of America's forgotten heroes, the Green Berets, Sunday afternoon at 2.05 on TV 41. The sacrifices our veterans have made for this country is something Americans should never forget. Nothing, nothing as we go to the top half of the second inning where Eric Davis awaits right hander Dennis Martinez. Reds were out on order or out the minimum three batters in the first after Eddie Milner single he was picked off Rose hit that sinking line drive that based on our replay it would appear that Freddie Brocklander missed it and then of course Parker had the deep drive that Wright caught stepping onto the warning track in straightaway center field Davis working on a nine game hitting streak batting 289 with 12 homers he had a two run shot deep into the Lower deck and right on Thursday night, as Pete pointed up yesterday, he said, I don't think a right-handed hitter can hit a ball that deeply into the seats in right field. He said, that's as long a home run to right as I've seen a right-handed hitter hit in the years I've been coming to this ballpark. One ball, one strike on Davis. Andre Dawson yesterday said the same thing, and he can hit the ball to the opposite field extremely well, and he said he has never seen anyone really get it that far. He hit a towering home run. I mean, it was no question when it left the bat, it was gone. It was just a matter of how far it would go. Well, Davis watching the workings of Martinez, as you see, making his first ever career appearance against the Reds. Although, as Pete pointed out tonight, he never misses a beat. The Reds have seen him in spring training while he was with the Orioles. Two and two. After Davis, it'll be Buddy Bell coming off of a two-hit night. Buddy getting back in the lineup last night after missing the finale in New York Wednesday and also the opener here on Thursday night. And the count is full on Davis. The nine-game hitting streak is the longest of any Reds players this season. Dave Parker, Bo Diaz, and... Tony Perez, the latter having his eight game streak stopped here last night. And it's a strikeout. And that's number one of the night for the Montreal right hander. He ran that pitch in on Davis, and Eric back to the dugout, bat in hand. Well, Davis, we've talked about taking the fastball from uh, Dennis Martinez, who does not have a great fastball, but as Marty said, he just ran it right inside, and that's a tough pitch for anybody to handle. Here's Buddy now batting 240, five homers and 28 RBIs, a big two run homer in the ninth against Orozco to tie it in New York on Tuesday night. That's the last start for John Denny. Well, Bell hitting a scorching 385 off Expo's pitching. Buddy, of course. The most familiar of Dennis Martinez of all the Reds players having spent all of his career up until the midpoint of last year first with the Indians and and then the Texas Rangers has faced Dennis Martinez many times in the past one ball two strikes. Right-hander coming back. And he went. No question about that. And it's back-to-back -back strikeout. So 
So two down, nothing going on as first Davis and now Bell go down swinging against Martinez and coming to the plate shortstop Kurt Stillwell. His second game back since being recalled from Denver after Davy Concepcion went down with a broken left hand in that game ending double play on Thursday night. Very, very freak accident. Concepcion inadvertently hit the head of first baseman Vance Law and therein lies the problem. And he will be out probably five weeks and hopefully no longer than that. Oh and two. Kurt left Denver yesterday morning really tired had a change planes finally got into Montreal about four four o'clock three forty five somewhere around that and uh, wanted to go to a restaurant because he hadn't eaten all day and Tracy Jones his old roommate said hey the bus is leaving pretty soon you better get over here finally ate right before the game of peanut butter and jelly sandwich he was <laughs> ready to go one hitless last night but picked up a stolen base the defense of course they're not concerned about he came out of spring training with everyone knowing that he could field on a major league level and he proved that in the 43 games that he appeared in before going down but uh, kid has at times been grossly overmatched at the plate. Two and two so much so that he had his eyes checked in Denver because he had never hit this poorly and said there must be something wrong with my eyesight went to the uh, eye doctor and he said hey there's nothing wrong with your eyesight as a matter of fact it's better than 2020 it must be your swing <laughs> it must be his <laughs> swing watching him over carefully here count is full and to add to that Marty his father Ron met him in Denver to go over his old hitting stroke and brought some films with him and it holds at three and two well I don't know frankly how much it helped he was batting 230 when he was brought back up from Denver although it'd been to the plate only 30 times and I think when uh, you sit for as much as he sat especially the last month uh, before going down it's going to take more than 30 at bats to get things back in order again. He's on with a walk and he battled Martinez to get that one. And Marty the other thing is confidence and that is a strange thing to talk about. But you have you seen so many like high school basketball players shoot 80 percent free throws in high school then they get to the college ranks and they shoot like 55 and you, they go what's wrong with my shot. Well it's just thinking really the confidence level believing that you should be there and sometimes uh, Kurt still I would imagine had to question whether or not he was ready for major league pitching. Well Eric Davis is the best example in the world of that. There's no guy in the world now with more confidence in his ability to hit any pitcher going and he has certainly proven that since getting back into the lineup. Sal Butera the former Expo batting 222 couple of homers. Eight runs knocked in. And the Reds have certainly gone on alert now after watching Martinez pick off Milner in the first inning. Still well with a decent lead over at first. One ball, one strike. When the day comes, and I don't really think anybody knows when that might be. I think uh, maybe next year was a little bit too much to hope for now in retrospect that he would take over shortstop on a daily basis. But when the day comes that he does, he's going to steal some bases in the big leagues. He'll be capable of stealing 15 to 20, I think, over the course of a season. Easy play for George Wright, and the Reds are gone in the second inning. No runs, no base hits, no errors, and one left. And after one and a half innings in this, the third of four, it's the Reds and the Expos, nothing, nothing. Bottom of the second in a nothing, nothing ball game. And there's a Red special date coming up at Riverfront thanks to Kool-Aid, and you'll want to be the first in line. It's watch day on Sunday, July 20th, when the Reds host the Phillies. And the first 15,000 young fans, 14 and under, receive a free Reds digital watch. Each five-function watch features the Reds team emblem, on a digital face that shows the time of day, the date in seconds. So join the Reds at Riverfront on Watch Day. That's Sunday, July 20th, sponsored by Kool-Aid. 
John Denny allowed a base runner in the first when he walked Vance Law with one out, but experienced no problems thereafter, and will now go to work here in the second to third baseman Tim Wallach. Wallach with 14 homers and an impressive total of 51 RBIs, and he was one of the angry young men. We put quotes around that because he was not chosen the National League All-Star team. How about Dennis Oil Can Boyd? How about the oil man? Team he guy, is. huh? Oh, team player. I'm telling you. He's been, he got teamed all right. He's been suspended and fined for that little outburst at Fenway Park two days ago. Good for him. Long foul, and it's one ball and two strikes on Wallach. There's another member of the Reds Alumni Society, Wayne Krenchicki, on deck. They've got Bill Ardello, they've got Krenchicki, they've got Tibbs, they've got McGaffigan. They got him. Count is holding. As a matter of fact, Wayne Krenchicki will bat next. He said he wanted to say hi to Jim Poe in Loveland, and he said, Jim, I caught a four-pound bass in a river outside Montreal the other day. That's all for Wallach. Jim is probably saying, go ahead, Steve, and finish, but it got away. <laughs> Not that one. He said he really hauled it in. He wanted to let Jim back in Cincinnati, Loveland area, know that he's thinking about him and that he's enjoying the wildlife up here in Montreal. Well, he's done an excellent job for this club in getting a lot of playing time right now at first base. Very valuable player. I mean, he can play third for you. He can go to second. That's his original position. Of course, I think it was Byrne Rapp who first put him at first base back a couple of years ago and uh, got a little bit of playing time there for the Reds last year and getting quite a bit this season for Montreal. Ball one, strike two. Is that true, Fizz? Yes, sir. And the pitch. Two and two. Well, I'll tell you, the forecast is not good tonight and tomorrow. It is downright horrible. Strike three call, and Denny with an outstanding breaking ball that got the outside corner, and Krenchicki says no way was that a strike. And he works a bit on Ed Montague. See if it was or not. Well, John Denny likes to go inside with the breaking pitch to left handers. This time he goes away and nails the outside corner of the plate. A beautiful pitch by John and picks up his second straight strikeout. And his second going exactly as Dennis Martinez did when he fanned Davis and Bill Bell back to back. Two out batter George Wright. with that 241 batting average and limited time since coming over in the deal from the Texas Rangers. He's already contributed tonight with that catch off Pete Rose and going back and tracking down the deep drive off the bat of Dave Parker, both in the first inning. There's another one of those ex-Reds players we were talking about a moment ago and very personable one at that and Danny Bellardello. And... Mr. Denny, all he's done is strike out the side. First Wallach, then Krenchicki, and now Wright. And we head on home into the third inning with a score, nothing, nothing. Laugh your way to the finish line when Tim Matheson sets off America's wildest rafting race up the creek. Catch the laughs Tuesday night at 8 on TV 40. You see Ron Oster heading toward the plate and John Denny waiting on deck. John had a very impressive second. Striking out the side and he's the man who leads the Reds pitching staff in strikeouts. He pushes his season total now to 78. I'd like to see Denny come up in a bunting situation because that would mean Ron Oster would get on to begin this third. Reds have had one hit. That was a leadoff single by Eddie Milner and one other base runner, Kurt Stillwell, who drew a walk in the second. Hold up for a moment. Jim Raines went out, came back, and I know he didn't go back into the dugout to get some sunglasses. Well, he is.
is finally at his position and it's Oster against Martinez. Ball one. Tell you what, Steve. Uh, Martinez might be crossing him up a little bit. I know the Reds were looking for a lot of breaking balls, and he's throwing a lot of fastballs here in the first two plus innings. Not as you point out earlier, does he have the the great fastball, or even a fastball that would equate to major league standards? But uh, when you've got hitters looking for one thing based on a pitcher's previous track record, and he comes at him throwing something else, uh, it can cause him some problems. Bobby Wine who uh, scouts for the Atlanta Braves who is here scouting both Montreal and Cincinnati said I know his earned run average is very high this year both with Baltimore and with Montreal but his changeup has been very strong he thought. That's a fair ball and that's going to be for at least two as Reigns heads into the corner to get the ball and plays it perfectly and Oster stops at second base with a leadoff double. Ronnie just cued that one out there as you would a pool ball and it hit fair. And he's out at second base. Martinez had the pitch way up in the strike zone from where he wanted to. That's up over belt high around the numbers area. And he just went down the line with it. And there is Lee Wire signaling it's a fair ball. Oster makes the turn and he'll hold on there with a double. So the second hit of the night for Cincinnati. First time they've had a runner at second base. And now they'll try to get him in. They're already looking for Denny and a bunt attempt with Krenchicki. At shallow at first base, and Wallach, he'll be also coming at third. And now Martinez steps off. Oster picks up his 13th double of the season. Dave Parker leads the club in that department, as you might expect, with 17. And that's a good bunt. Danny does his job. One four on the sacrifice with Ron Oster now standing at third base and Eddie Milner coming back for an encore. Denny gets the bunt down perfectly nice and soft on the dirt where it can go right out slowly towards the pitcher and he is cut down but Oster goes over to third base and we saw an unusual situation last night on really a slug bunt situation where Bill Gullickson pushed the ball over to the right side. And had the uh, second baseman not already been coming over, that ball would have been through for a base hit. And Certainly I've never would've. rarely seen an unassisted to the second baseman Four covering first base play. But it got the job done. Infield comes in as the pitch comes to Milner, ball one. Had both Law and Hubie Brooks, the second baseman and shortstop respectively, start the charge as Martinez came to the plate. Now the infield staying in, although Brooks backing up a step or so and He'll probably be coming in a few steps as Martinez delivers his next pitch. One ball, one strike. Neither team has scored. Playing baseball in the top of the third. Oster doubled. Denny got him over with a bunt, and Milner trying to bring him in. One ball, two strikes. And Milner fails to get the run in. Krenchicki took it all by himself. Ronnie talking with third base coach Billy DeMars you saw the quick shot and uh, I can't imagine them talking about Oster should have broken to the plate on that ball because I would imagine he would have been a dead duck it got to Krenchicki fairly quickly on one bounce and you saw Wayne keeping an eye out all the while for Oster to see what he was going to be doing as he took the ball to the bag to retire Eddie. So now it's up to Pete as the infield drops back at normal depth with two away. Ball one. Pete asking plate umpire Ed Montague to take a look at the baseball, which he does, and uh, 
keeps it in play. Pete has not fared well at all against this team. He's been up now 22 times, has had one base hit. Although by virtue of the replay, it looked like he had a hit taken away on the umpire's call in the first inning. Not far enough. One ball, one strike. They'll wrap it up here tomorrow, weather permitting. Tom Browning slated to go for the Reds against former Reds right hander Jay Tibbs. The three day All Star break and then back to baseball on Thursday night as the Reds begin an 11 game homestand against the same three teams that they have played on this road trip. First, the Phillies for four, New York for three, and Montreal for four. And Rose falls behind on the count on that foul strike down the left side. I would imagine all of the uh, Reds pitching staff and Pete Rose got together talking about Dennis Martinez and like you talk about Tom Browning pitching backwards it seems like Martinez is also now he's going with more breaking pitches this inning than he did with the prior two innings. Two balls two strikes. Martinez would like to be able to get out of this inning by retiring Rose. He would not relish having to face Dave Parker with a couple of runners on base. Wouldn't think he would. Rose still battling. Think of all the records that he holds, and it's, it's at times mind boggling. Of course, one of the more impressive, and I think one that Rose is, uh, uh, cherishes as much as any of them, the fact he's played in a record 1,963 winning games. No player in the history of this game has played in that many winning ball games. It's a lot of high fives. Boy, I'm telling you. Of course, he started that streak before anyone knew what a high five was. <laughs> Low fives, handshakes. I think back then in the early 60s, it was probably a, a good uh, old-fashioned handshake. Pat, pat on, on the, the back. back. Yes, sir. <laughs> before the headbutt, the Chicago Bear headbutt. Charlie Kerfell of Houston has adopted that now. <laughs> was that interview a piece of work today? What a on wild the man. NBC pregame show with Marv Albert. You guys' porch light's a little dim, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Still at two and two. And Martinez. I loved his final line to Charlie when Marv was making his exit. I hope you get help very soon. No, no. He said you can very quietly oh, seek help. Seek help. Yeah. Very quietly seek help. I think Charlie that went right over Charlie's head. I mean, it. He it, doesn't do anything very quietly. No, he's a really he's a throwback to to Brad Leslie, who was with the Reds a few years back. Although I think Brad was a bit more vociferous in his. Uh, body action and such when he was successful in striking out a hitter or saving or winning a ball game than than Charlie Kerfeld is. Dennis Martinez is pitched out of trouble and the Reds let an opportunity slip away from him. They had Oster at third with one out and couldn't score him. And that means that at the end of two and a half innings of baseball the Reds and the Expos are nothing nothing. When the only thing you want from life is more. Daryl Hannah, Reckless. Wednesday night at 8 on TV 41. And we move to the bottom of the third with a nothing-nothing game in the works at the moment. John Denny and Dennis Martinez hooking up and pitching well here early. Denny is not allowed yet a hit and comes off of a second that saw him strike out the side. So he goes to work on Danny Bellardello. 182 batter. Now Roger Clemens came up with his 15th victory of the season today as the Boston Red Sox came from behind to defeat the California Angels. 2 and 0 on Billardello. Clemens in all I would imagine he'd be the starting pitcher in the All-Star game for the American League on Tuesday night. 
two balls and one strike three to two that final Boston over California. Now the veteran cut in front of the rookie to make the play and throw Bill Ardello out. Buddy Bell on to Pete Rose. Several of the players were saying wouldn't it be nice if they started Charlie Huff and then brought Roger Clemens on and that fastball look about 900 miles an hour. I'll tell you what that's not a bad idea especially in a game like that when you have two fellows who go at it in radically different ways uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. Of course most of the time that starter is a guy who gets the assignment on merit and there's no pitcher in the American League who deserves to be the starter more than Roger Clemens does. Here's Dennis Martinez. Well he made contact coming over to Montreal he had not swung the bat in an official major league game until he came over from the Orioles so for a guy like him to make contact that's a moral victory. He's one for five now batting 200. Not and bad. That base hit was a double to drive in a run. Wonder if he got the baseball. Didn't I would have. have. Two away as Tim Raines comes back. He opened the first for Montreal and bounced out on a close play at first base. Still well to Rose. Now we talked about that Thursday night. He has just been amazing in his ability to get on. Pete Rose causing the best leadoff batter without question in the National League and may well be the best in baseball. Ball one. He's also done a lot of things recently to help out his cause. I just saw his comments the other day in the newspaper about being voted to uh, the uh, National League All-Star team by the play by the manager Whitey Herzog and the comment was simply hey I I'm very pleased that the uh, Montreal fans all got together and voted me for it. He was deserving to be in the top three but no even question. Though, but he went through that drug rehabilitation and took a lot out of him here he was booed around the league but he has gone about it very quietly and very very uh, conscientiously and worked very hard to get his name and reputation back on stack and he certainly has two and one Denny falling behind. John has retired six seven in a row since the walk in the first to Vance Law. And that streak ends right there. Base hit right. Timmy just reaches out and wraps that breaking pitch to right field by a Ron Oster. First hit for Montreal. So we'll keep an eye out on Reigns, who goes into tonight's action third in the National League in stolen bases. He has 41 less than Eric Davis. And Denny, he spins law around with that up and in fastball. ball one strike Reigns gets about the same lead as that of Eric Davis you gauge a good lead for the most part when a runner has one foot on the turf and one foot in the dirt area and uh, as you watch Reigns take his lead over there at first base you'll watch that foot actually not quite as big a lead as Davis will normally get but I'm sure he has to respect the move of John Denny who has a very good one the best on the Reds Definitely. I, all the good ones will get the kind of lead that they are comfortable with in terms of being able to get back to the bag. Of course, he has a great acceleration, as Davis does. Buddy Bell will go to second, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, one left. We are a third of the way through this one, and neither the Reds nor the Expos have crossed the plate. Crunches. 
A scoreless ball game between Cincinnati and Montreal. Top of the fourth inning of play. I'm Steve Fiziak, along with the old left-hander now joining us, Joe Nuxall. And Joe, you're a pitcher, and right now Dennis Martinez changing speeds very well, and John Denny really seems to be in command of his game. Well, John uh, is off to another good one, uh, Steve, and uh, so is Martinez. He's had a rough go of it in his two starts uh, with the Expos, but he's pitching very well through three innings, and uh, we had a shot in the last inning, uh, but unable to take advantage of it, so hopefully we can get a couple of more. Well, the Reds had Ron Oster at third base and only one out, but Milner grounded out. So did Pete Rose, and it's still a scoreless ball game. So here in inning number four, the heart of the Reds lineup, the big guns, Dave Parker to be followed by Eric Davis, and then Buddy Bell. Parker flew out to George Wright to end the first his last time up. So Martinez gets set to work his fourth inning of play. And longest that Dennis has gone this year with Montreal is on July 2nd, went six innings against Chicago, had no decision in that game, gave up six hits and four runs. Has allowed two hits in the ball game, one in the first to Eddie Milner, and a double to Ron Oster to the last inning. Well, Dave Parker going the opposite way, fouls it off at strike one. Reds trying to put themselves in a good position for the second half of that All-Star break. Right now, really working with a 22-man roster with Tracy Jones and Bo Diaz unavailable. Parker with a pop-up. Foul territory, third base side, Tim Wallach, one out. Wallach had a little funny thing to say to Wayne Krenchicki today. Wayne was over at the uh, Reds' dugout and was talking to the guys and Wallach yelled across from the diamond so everybody could hear why are you talking to those guys they didn't want you in the first place he was probably talking to Shirker <laughs> checking on the fishing checking on the fishing I'm sure about that well there's Wayne Krenchicki who he and Tim Wallach are very close friends but Wayne very good friends with everybody with the Cincinnati organization very well liked when he was with the Reds through his career well Eric Davis takes one inside and twists him around it's ball one It foul. It's one ball and one strike. It's the old third base coach Billy DeMars and hitting instructor for Cincinnati. And over on the first base side, well, there's Tommy Helms, a standing second baseman who is looking forward to that All Star game back in his old stopping ground down in Houston. Again, a foul ball. It's one and two. And Joe Price making a nice grab down to the Reds dugout. Ron Oster inspecting. Davis was really tied up by Dennis Martinez, and Marty was talking about him crossing the Reds up. Let's see what he does here with the count one and two. Call time. But Joe, do you agree? Just we heard crossing. he was a breaking ball pitcher, and he's been throwing a lot more fastballs. Right. You know, Buddy said he. Uh, I was talking to Buddy Bell, and. Uh, he had a good fastball. He used to probably had one of the better arms in the American League. So, uh, you know, you, when you start going up there looking for things, uh, I don't think he crosses you up. You cross yourself up. You wind up going, heading back to the dugout with that hand in your that bat in your hand. Two balls and two strikes. Just misses low three and two. Then he might have said, guys, that was a strike over in the other league. Is it a little wider over in the American League? I don't, you know, we don't see enough of it. It's hard to tell. I think it's standardized, uh, though, in the last few years, particularly since uh, the American League umpires basically work about the same as the National League. Eric Davis rips it to left field. Reigns will race over. Davis makes the turn, but he will hold it first there. Ten straight. That's ten straight. His hitting streak now goes to ten. Well, we showed you Reigns in the inning prior to this, and he had the chance to tie Eric Davis at stolen bases. Eric with 41 and Reigns with 40. 
Here you can see the pitch and look like a off speed pitch and Eric right on it and I wish he'd have got it up in the air. We'd been up but one. Boy, does he hit everything hard? So he has a pretty good lead over at first base. Martinez has already picked off one red in the game. Eddie Milner to start the ball game. When Rain Kinchicki really made a fine play, tumbling over Milner, but able to make the catch and put the tag down. Second to Vince Coleman of St. Louis, who has 56. Right now, Eric doesn't have the lead that he normally gets, and uh, that's simply because he does not know that much about Martinez as yet. Now he's getting a little better. He's still about a, a foot short of his normal lead. Buddy Bell, and there goes Eric, and the throw not nearly in time. He got a great jump, a slow delivery to home plate, and Villardello's throw was there but by that time Davis was already standing on second base. Well I think the thing about Eric you can see there he accelerates so quickly and uh, no chance at all for Billardello with that big uh, delivery but like you're right there now it'd been interesting if it's uh, Vance Hoff had taken a swipe at Eric because he was uh, over the bag. Well he has 42 stolen bases now in 46 attempts. Bell takes a strike at the knees one and one. And Eric is a threat to steal third. He has stolen it eight of ten times this year. Martinez is trying to get a little bit of help from Vance Law, who's creeping in from behind at second base. Eric Davis they've got him picked off and Martinez will run him run him down and make the are they saying he did yes they did make the tag he ran out of the baseline. Well Eric what really he was doing he was going on the time of, uh, of Martinez and take a look at it right here and now see that the little balk move it's not a balk though as he raised his leg and turned back and uh, had Eric good job by Martinez too in the rundown Eric dodging uh, out of the way then tag with Fred Brocklander or not Fred Brocklander but Lee Wire the third base umpire called him out right away for running out of the baseline. Buddy Bell with a grounder hard to Hubie Brooks and the throw is in time to cut down Buddy Bell and end the fourth inning for Cincinnati. It's still a scoreless ball game. Two threats denied by Montreal and Dennis Martinez. There's Yuppie, the Montreal Expos mascot, a nothing-nothing ball game. Bottom of the fourth inning of play, Andre Dawson will lead things off, Hubie Brooks to follow, and then Tim Wallach. It's low ball one. John Denny has worked well through the first three innings of play, allowing just a base hit and a walk. The walk to Vance Law, the base hit to Tim Raines. And there's the ground ball to Buddy Bell. Quick toss just does get Andre Dawson. Well, a good play by Buddy, a high chopper. And I'll tell you what, I can remember the day that Andre beats that one out easily. And he's got the bad legs. You see Buddy here charging the ball and going on the run. And he gets a nice hop, right? Head high and two, three steps and towing and got him uh, by a good step. But. Uh, tell you four or five years ago oh Andre you could get down that line. Well, you know despite those injuries to both knees he was disabled for the first time in his 10 major league career earlier this year when he had that pulled hamstring and was placed on the 15 day disabled list. Meantime we go to Hubie Brooks. Well he has just been hitting the ball extremely well run production outstanding the last 57 games. One ball one strike. One and two balls in one strike. Well, after Hubie Brooks, Tim Wallach will follow. Marty was talking about he being disappointed about not being named to the National League All-Star team, despite having better run-producing numbers. 
than the third baseman for the San Francisco Giants, Chris Brown. The count goes now 2 2. There's a lot of disappointed people. Even Oil Can Boyd was disappointed. We were talking about that also. <laughs> Can you believe that? Here's a little check swing. Back to John Denny. Easy play, and there's two down. He was more than disappointed, I guess. Is he uh, going to get in his pocket again? I, I can't believe like what it. he did. He must he, like that. He found out that he was not named to the American League All-Star team, tore off his uniform, stormed out of the clubhouse, and you're thinking, here's a team that's in the American League East lead, and you've got to be thinking team baseball, and he's thinking about uh, himself missing the All-Star <laughs> game, and boy, they got on him and fined him for it. Tim Wallach. Rightly so. I know, what do you tell a guy like that, Joe? John McNamara. Tell him you boss. didn't make it. I don't know what else you going to tell him. He did have a fine record, but there were others equally well, as deserving as well. It's like that every year, though, Steve, when they get into the All Star selections. Uh, you got to disappoint some people. That's all there is to it. You can't take uh, 150 players. Wallach was saying that my run producing numbers were better the 14 home runs along with the 51 RBIs and seven game winners and he drags one to the left field that twists away foul. Two balls two strikes. And he thought Chris Brown he goes yes he is leading the league in hitting at that time that Huey Brooks has now taken over. And yet I just thought I was more deserving with my bat and with my glove again. He fouls one to the left field area. Stays the same two and two. But Brown can play some defense as well. We saw that when we were at a candlestick. You talk about disappointments. Well, we'll get into that later. Tim Wallach is the most disappointed Expo right now as he strikes out. And John Denny, another one, two, three inning. And you see the score nothing, nothing. A beautiful sunset overlooking Olympic Stadium here in Montreal. The Reds and Expos are scoreless as we head to the fifth. And the Reds summer schedule features lots of Super X senior citizen specials. And there's one coming up on Thursday, July 17th against the Phillies at 735. Veteran Reds fans, 65 and over, may purchase box and reserve seat tickets at half price in advance of game day thanks to Super X drug stores. Convenient bus and van parking make it easy. So be on hand for all the upcoming Super X senior citizen specials, including Thursday, July 17th, against the Phillies at 7:35. That's coming up in uh, oh, this coming week. One final from around the American League: Texas beat Cleveland 11-6. You already heard about the Boston over California 3-2 win for Roger Clemens, number 15. Well, Kurt Stillwell will lead things off for Cincinnati here in inning number five as both Martinez and John Denny dual shutout fashion. Fouls it off. One ball, one strike. That's the last Ouch. time Hubie Brooks was at bat. He oh. sure did. It didn't look that way. Apparently the umpire did not see him foul it off his foot, Joe. Maybe Hubie didn't feel it either. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't complain. He sure didn't. <laughs> Maybe he didn't. He has, doesn't have tender feet then. There's Hubie right there. Former New York Met third baseman turned shortstop on the trade from Gary Carter. Still well outside corner got him looking at his strikeout number three for Dennis Martinez. That's a fastball right there. Billardello sitting out there and you can see it run just a bit but uh, right on that outside corner and a good pitch by Martinez. So Martinez has three and has one out with nobody on here in the fifth and Sal Butera who has been on base a lot lately standing up there. Breaking pitch misses. Ball one. You 
talked about that on base percentage. For the last 17 games he is 10 for 47 plus 15 walks. So Sal showing a good eye particularly with Bo Diaz out and this guy the only catcher the Reds have available. Up high two balls no strikes and Joe Pete Rose was saying hey if Sal gets hurt it's either me meaning himself Pete Rose or Davy Concepcion but Davy is gone so who after that. <laughs> well, he may be asking no for idea. the old left hander. No, you don't have to worry about me. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Who would they go after that? I know you have to look probably at uh, Oster. You may be the only one with, with any catching experience, though, <laughs> besides Pete. And there is Fair a ball. line drive. Fair down the left field line and for Butera extra bases Reigns will send it back in but Sal has himself a one out double. So that's the fourth base hit of the ball game in the third time in the last three innings the Reds have had a threat going. There's a fastball right in on uh, Sal he hit it well by the diving Wallach and on down in the corner and you can see Reigns down there playing the ball and you have to be careful just as you do in Cincinnati that ball gets by you particularly here with that uh, I don't know what they call the substance it's uh, a warning track but that thing gets by you it'll roll a long way. 335 down the left field line same dimensions down the right field side and 404 to straightaway center. Oster takes inside ball one. Well the Reds threats in the last three innings in the third Ron Oster was on third with only one out Reds failed to get him in then Eric Davis was on second with one out and was picked off. Now Butera is on with only one out he's at second base. Ron with a fly ball to center. George Wright makes the catch two outs. Well John Denny has driven in a run this year and he will be the Reds next batter. Checked into the ball game with an average of 189. He had a sacrifice his first time up, moving Ron Oster to third base with a, an excellent bunt. But now in a swinging away situation here, seven hits in 37 at bats this year. In there, strike one. One ball, one strike. Breaking pitch in a pretty one, one and two. That's against the Pitchers union, that's not right. He's throwing him three pitches, two of them hooks. So he'll get a call from the office, huh? He might get another hook here too. I say might. It's like gully last night. The base was loaded. He decided that he was going to get a hook or a slider from McGaffigan, and he threw him a fastball, and he just played peekaboo. Baya. Well, here's a little ground ball, broken back to the second baseman. Law throws him out, and another. Red's threat is denied. At the end of four and one half innings, we have a scoreless ball game here in Montreal. It's hot, awesome with a foot stomping beat. It's number one with a bullet. Old Brown Eyes is back. And he's a smash all over town. He just woke up with a monstrous appetite. And he's looking for something to sink his teeth into. 
Godzilla 85. Sunday at 5.05 on TV 41. Four. Scoreless ball game, and we are in the fifth inning of play, bottom of the fifth. And you know there was cap day, batting helmet day, jersey day, and bat day at Riverfront Stadium. Now your youngster can round out his 1986 Reds outfit on Sox Day at Riverfront. It's Sunday, July 27th, when the Reds take on the Expos at 2.15, and the first 15,000 youngsters 14 and under receive a free pair of red sports socks thanks to Kenny shoes these white socks feature red stripes of their calf and the Reds team emblem on the side make your plans now for socks day Sunday July 27th sponsored by Kenny shoes John Denny really has pitched a very strong first four innings of play he has walked one he has allowed one base hit he has set down the last four Montreal Expos he has faced and will face a former Red Wayne Krinchicki to lead things off here in the bottom of the fifth In there, strike two. Checks his swing. It's one ball, two strikes. And the umpire, Ed Montague, wants to take a look at that baseball. Hard to say anything about John that we haven't said already. Uh, Steve, in the games he's pitched, he's just uh, he's pitched outstanding baseball. It's, it's a shame that. We can't get him any runs. There's another good curveball that uh, Prince makes a wave at. There was a writer last night, Joe, who was talking about Bill Gullickson saying, hey, you know, Bill, it's good that he won 3-2. He's pitched with a lot of bad luck. And Pete said, wait a second. If you want to talk about pitching with bad luck, how about tomorrow night starter John Denny? He has pitched with an extremely amount of bad luck lately. Well, you just, you know, I don't know why, but I think every pitching staff will have an individual that's uh, like that. Uh, for some unknown reason, uh, you just don't, while he's in the ball game, you don't seem to score runs. And uh, it's, it's happened uh, many, many times. It's not uh, something strange or new. But John saying, as the count goes 2-0, and oh, there was a time in my career where I would let little things like the offense not supporting me or a bad play behind me or an umpire's call really affect me. And he said, I really think I have my focus, my concentration right there at this point in my career. He said, the only problem is my fastball is not what it once was. The count is 3-0 and oh, to George Wright. Three and one. Has he been taking a lot off the curveball as well tonight? Yes, he's well. He's got an off uh, off speed curve, the straight change, and uh... well, right with a mash to right field, but it will go foul, and the count just goes full at three and two. So George had timed it well, but just. Uh, Timed it a little bit prematurely to pull it. Stays the same. Full three and two. John in his last five outings has been able to go six strong innings. And with the exception of that loss to Philadelphia, he has given up just three runs or less. Two runs against Houston, two against Atlanta in seven innings, three against San Francisco in eight innings and took a loss there, five against Philadelphia last weekend, and against New York earlier this week, he gave up three runs in six innings, but Weir's really snake bit two of those runs unearned, and the other run coming on a very strange play in New York. So Denny has George Wright full. Misses inside ball four. That's only his second walk of the ball game. And it brings us to Dan Billardello.
Many friends for this young guy around the Cincinnati area. Takes it high, ball one. George Wright has very good speed. He's over at first base. And Joe's favorite sport in activity here at Olympic Stadium, the wave. Joe's still waiting for his first collision wave of the year that he invented in Montreal. The pitch out, but the runner was not going, and the count's 2-0. and oh. Only problem, Joe, they can't collide because we have no center field stands. Nope. They're safe. <laughs> Wright is going. The pitch inside. The throw to second is high. And George Wright has the stolen base. His first as an expo this year. Here's a pretty good pitch for Sal to throw on. It looked like he got a good grip on the ball right off, and nice save by Ron Oster to keep it from going into center field. But right had it stolen easily. So Montreal has their first threat of this ball game. So you better be careful. I would have to think that Bill Ardello would have the green light here with a pitcher on deck. Montreal had Reigns on at first base and Vance Lawn at first base with one out in the first. Reigns was on with two outs in the third, but Law grounded out. And Buck Rogers over in the Montreal dugout is thinking, well, perhaps this is our chance. But Bill Ardello pounds it foul, and the count goes full three and two. ball popped up. Denny will call off the catcher Sal Butera and then turn and make sure George Wright stays at second base. He does and here comes the pitcher Dennis Martinez. Well you say there why wouldn't Sal Butera take the ball uh, Steve but certainly it was a much easier play for John Denny moving toward toward the ball rather than Rutera having to go out after the ball and you see Sal calling him all away and just an easy play for Denny. So John gets the big out and now Martinez who is one for five this season with a double and an RBI. But really he is. One for five and uh, one for how many years because he was always DH for in the American League. Little chopper that will go foul. But Joe, what do you think here? Dennis threw John some breaking pitches. You think he'll see some and uh, get the uh, players union again upset? Well, <laughs> you have to pitchers get him union. Out. Excuse me. I, I, you know, we very strong about getting people out too, but this doesn't. But there again, uh, if you if they curve you, then you have to say, well, why guys, they respect me with the bat. Whoop. I <laughs> 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 see what I mean. Pitchers unions making their phone Old call Dennis. right now. Dennis, <laughs> he wasn't sure which way he wanted to go on that. Well, the count is one and two. Right with the lead at second base. Swing and a miss, and that is strikeout number six in the ball game for John Denny, and the Expo threat is denied. At the end of five, we've got a scoreless ball game. Well, it's a scoreless ball game as we head to the sixth inning of play, and the Reds and Pepsi have teamed up again this year to give the Reds country runners a one-of-a-kind event. It's the Reds Pepsi home run on Friday, August 15th. The entire two-and-a-half mile run takes place between games of the Reds Padres doubleheader, and the finish line is on the turf at Riverfront Stadium. Runners receive a free ticket to the Twin Bill, a race T-shirt, free Pepsi, plus the chance to finish in front of thousands of cheering Reds fans. To get your Reds Pepsi home run entry form, call the Reds at area code 513-421-4510. Dennis Martinez heads back to the mound to start his sixth inning of play. Again, he has worked no more than six innings this year for Montreal. And that six-inning performance was against Chicago. He will face 
Eddie Milner to lead things off here in the sixth. Yeah, you talk about baseball fans, Steve, and there's one here, uh, Bob Webb. He is everywhere and uh, he drives every place. So I remember early in the season we were in St. Louis, went from St. Louis to Pittsburgh. He drove uh, practically all night to get to uh, Pittsburgh for that series, and he's all over the place. And uh, he's here tonight. See if we can find him. Point him out to you. He is uh, a ghost. It almost seems like he'll beat you to the ballpark. He, he's there. He, he's always there. Uh, today, when we came out at 1:30, uh, he was sitting in the uh, lobby out in the Olympic Stadium, uh, chatting with some uh, Expo fans, I assume. Milner, come on, Eddie. Could be three. Could yes, be indeed. three. Come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. Come on. No, he's going to hold up at second base. And the ball really wide of its target getting by the cutoff line, or Milner could have had the three bases. Dawson has an outstanding arm, and perhaps that's what Eddie Milner was thinking about. But the ball had bobbled around that right field cor corner long enough, Joe. Well, here's uh, Eddie with his swing. He hits a ball solidly by the diving Krenchicki. And now watch the ball roll down in the corner, and Eddie really moving he's looking at Dawson and then he slows up and uh, before he even gets to second base and I am well you know yeah he's a leadoff batter certainly you don't want him throwing out a third but it really looked like he had a shot at third and had it easy. Well perhaps that out of respect out of respect for one of the great arms for any right fielder in the game Andre Dawson he has like 92 assists in his entire career tremendous arm it can be compared with Dave Parker of the Reds. But you're right the uh, throw is wide of the cutoff man and it looked like Milner would have been in there. Two balls and no strikes to Pete Rose. He's over two in the ball game. Reds have threatened the last three innings. They've been unable to come up with anything as we still have a scoreless ball game here at Olympic Stadium. drive to right field but Dawson is back Milner will tag he'll be at third with one out well, Martinez got it up in the strike zone and Pete gave it a, a good ride you'll see it uh, right here ball is right up in the strike zone maybe a little out of the strike zone possibly but Pete a good swing at it and Got good wood on it and is able to get Eddie over to third with Parkway at the plate and only one out. It looks like the Expo infield is going to play back, particularly Brooks at short and Law at second. Here's a look at the left side of the infield, Wallach and Brooks. Is that in respect of Dave Parker and his outstanding power, Joe? Simply because earlier in this game when the Reds had this situation, a runner on third base and only one out. With Ron Oster at third, they play the infield in with Milner and Rose coming up. Well, it is a little at this point in the ball game, sixth inning. It's a little strange to, to play him back. You would think they would be in uh, uh, maybe four or five steps. Uh, Wallach and Krenchicki are in on the corners, but the, the middle of the infield back. There's a look at your defense. There's you see regular depth. Parker a swing and a miss counts even one and one threw him a good change there and that Dave way out in front. Here's we'll take another look at it soon we get it back to Denny he's got it now there we go here's the change up and watch Dave way out there and a lot of movement on the ball too. Milner's at third only one out here in the sixth. And the ball kind of slips away from Dan Bilodello as the count goes two and one. And Eddie will have to go back to the base. For Dennis Martinez, this is by far his strongest outing this year. He did throw two innings in New York and Pittsburgh without allowing a run, and that's what got him into the starting rotation. Eric Davis to follow Dave Parker.
Again, he waves the change in the outside corner, and it's 2-2. I see the count two and two on. He's going to do his best not to give anything for Dave can handle with any authority. He might come right back. Now well, I missed a sign. He might just throw him another one. And he did. Parker lifts it into shallow center field, and back goes Hubie Brooks. He'll make the catch. Milner's not going anywhere, and here comes Eric Davis now with two outs. Wow. Reds have had their opportunities, have thus far been unable to cash in on them. And Parker has flied out three straight times. Center field, third base, and now to the shortstop. Still a scoreless ball game for the man who Dave Parker will sit next to, John Denny. And the guy for Montreal who is in control is Dennis Martinez. Davis takes low, ball one. Swing and a miss, one and one. Well, he's keeping that ball down, Joe. You know, I, I just uh, watching Dennis. Uh, uh, I'm uh, wondering if he had. Uh, lo looks a little strange the way that he's going down. <laughs> I guess it's a good, real good sinker. Sure was. You could see that rotation twisting around towards the batter. Oh, there's strike two. One and two. him throw in the American League he was outstanding Reds with two outs Milner at third Davis with the count one and two here's the pitch low it's two and two this guy won 30 games in 1981 and 82 and then had the alcohol problems went to an alcohol rehabilitation center and floundered in his next two seasons 83 and 84 going seven and 16 and six and nine Boy, tonight he has been tough. Davis swings and misses, striking out. And for the fourth straight inning, the Reds threat has been denied. It's still a scoreless ball game here in Montreal. Scoreless ball game, and the Reds and Bordendary are teaming up for a blockbuster special date at Riverfront Stadium. It's Backpack Day on Sunday, August 17th, when the Reds take on the Padres. The first 15,000 youngsters in attendance, 14 and under, receive that beautiful right there from Borden, Reds backpack. Each red canvas backpack is just the right size for carrying school boxes and school books and lunches, anything to and from school. Be sure to be on hand for this Super Red Special Day, Backpack Day, on Sunday, August 17th, thanks to Borden Dairy. Sixth inning of play, trouble for Montreal. That's Tim Raines. He'll be followed by Vance Law and then Andre Dawson. Well, the Reds and Expos are after the advantage in this series this evening. Montreal won the opener 8-6, and Cincinnati came back last night behind the pitching of Bill Gullickson and John Franco to win 3-2. Gullickson gaining his sixth victory and Franco his 14th save. Now the break even game. Ball one. Denny has had a stellar performance. He has struck out six, walked two, and allowed only one base hit. That by this man. And range with a ground ball to Ron Oster will be erased for the first out. been on base once tonight and a race on a force play in the third. 
Well, that win by the Reds last night, their ninth in the last 12 games, and pushed Cincinnati to 39 and 44, five games over 500. There's strike one to Vance Law. And that coupled with losses by every other team in the National League West, and the Reds gain one game on everybody. Today, San Francisco and Houston have won, and Atlanta has lost. So if the Reds are able to pick up the victory here this evening, they could move within one half game of fourth place in the National League West. Owen to the count of Ants Law. Ball one. Oster, second time in a row, two outs. You know, Stephen, that the close-up you just saw just before John delivered a pitch, and watch his eyes where they're at. So many pitchers will wind up and look away from the plate and then come back. But you watch John. He has got his eyes right on that plate and the target at all times. And, boy, that's that's something you like to see because I can never, you know, I, I realize you have your little habits and uh, everyone does, but uh, my gracious, uh, when you're going to throw a ball somewhere, I think you, you can, should look at it as long as you possibly can. And you'll see John see his head looking at it, right at it. And he just keeps his eyes right on that target. All right, look, here it is. Look at that now. Look, right? He's got his head. He knows exactly where he's going to throw the ball or he's looking exactly where he wants to throw it. A little different than Fernando Valenzuela <laughs> or Luis Tian, who would look everywhere but in How the about catcher's glove. Gene Garber. The same. Great. Dawson with a ground ball foul. Count goes two and one. And you know, he said the man who really helped him through that was not a pitching coach, but Gus Hepling, who helped him with his really concentration to make sure you make every pitch count. Well, you, you know, it's it's like a catcher giving a target. Now, some catchers uh, disagree. They say, well, they, if I give a target too early, the hitter can see it. Well, I. I want to see him be able to pick it up, providing how soon you give it, of course. Dawson with a fly ball to Eddie Milner. Three down. And Denny with an easy sixth, and we're still scoreless through six here at Olympic Stadium. There were several in Baltimore that said Dennis Martinez needed a change of scenery. This is not what they were talking about when he was acquired by the Montreal Expos from Baltimore. But he had gone through four really rough seasons with the Baltimore Orioles, and they simply felt, well, a change of scenery might help him. Right now, he's proving that is correct, throwing six innings of shutout baseball against the Cincinnati Reds. Well, here in inning number seven, Dennis Martinez, number 32, will face Buddy Bell. Kurt Stillwell and then Sal Butera. One and oh the count on Buddy. He had two hits last night, is 0 for 2 thus far this evening. And he rips one down the line past him. Wallach, there's extra bases. So the Reds will have a threat going again as Bell cruises into second base. That was a curveball that Martinez hung a little bit for Buddy, and he did exactly what you'd want to do with it, and he shot it by Wallach. Pretty good effort by Wallach, but Bell hit the ball pretty hard, and uh, well, another leadoff man on. Let's see if we can get a run this time. See, Buddy sees the double all the way, and Reigns comes up and just kind of lobs it back to the infield. Martinez has never gone past six innings this year with Montreal. But he was a starter who threw a ton of innings. With some with activity Baltimore. down in the Montreal bullpen. Kurt Stillwell up there. Now Bob McClure will start throwing. Stillwell will bunt but takes inside. One and oh. that Montreal bullpen that Joe is talking about it indeed is the left hander Bob McClure the former Kansas City Royal Milwaukee Brewer. Outside two and oh. 
Four times the Reds have threatened with men in scoring position. Either one or two outs in this game. Four times they have failed to get somebody home. Well, when somebody game. throwing down in our bullpen, Ron Robinson is throwing in our bullpen. So if we get into a scoring situation, it looks like we might have a pinch hitter for John Denny. The pitcher spot will be number five this inning. Still well bunched, but bunched it foul, and Billadello makes a race for it, but it's just strike one. Two balls, one strike. And there's the Reds right handed side of that strong relief bullpen. Robinson from the right, Franco from the left, and John with his 14th save last night. And here comes Larry Bernard. Stillwell has the count two and one. Three balls, one strike. Sal Butera, Ron Oster to follow. There's the Reds catcher as Bell leads away from second base with nobody out here in the seventh of a scoreless ball game. Low ball. Oh, they called a strike. Joe, what do you think? Well, that's pretty close there, but uh, Ed Montague didn't, of course, hesitate. Let's take another look. There's uh, right on the knees, Bill Ardello's glove, and wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was already having him at first base with a walk, and now the count has gone full three and two. And a very demanding youngster. Traveled through Cedar Rapids and on to Vermont and quickly to uh, Denver. And now at the age of 21 in the major leagues. Trying to punch across the Reds' first run of this ball game here in the seventh. And Stillwell with a base hit back up the middle. Buddy Bell rounds third. He will <laughs> score the game's first run of the ball game. And Joe Nuxall is laughing. I'm looking at You've the monitor. You've got to explain it. I'm at the monitors and from center field. The ball I ducked. <laughs> <laughs> Joe thought the ball was coming right back at him. <laughs> oh, my yeah, goodness. That's what happens when you're not a veteran of the old TV business, see it. Otherwise, I've been looking on the field. <laughs> <laughs> For you watching at home, you see that baseball come right oh, back at you from the center field really? camera. Well, Joe's thinking the ball's coming right at him, and he ducks. <laughs> Meantime, the Reds have the lead 1-0 by way of the rookie's RBI. <laughs> I mean, he flat was underneath the table. <laughs> Sal Butera up there in a bunting situation takes a strike. Well, I like to duck two or three more times during the inning then if it'll produce a run. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be worn out. We'll have to go to the bullpen for you. <laughs> yeah. You've been throwing batting yeah. practice behind the cage too long. Butera. With a hard one to Brooks on the first, they got the double play. Well, Stillwell was moving, and that's the only way the Expos get that double play. A well, good play by Hubie Brooks, and Hubie not not really sure he has the ball. Butera hit the ball hard, but uh, Sal, uh, as Hubie said, oh, I, here I got it, and here's a chance. See that uh, Kurt had a chance to really get Vance Law, but. Uh, I guess a little late arriving and uh, really thinking the ball might have gone into center field. So a big double play for the Expos. And Joe Stillwell is not moving. That is a base hit right back up the middle. Nobody on. Oster tries base to bunt his way on, and this is a beauty. Martinez throw, not in time. A base hit for Ron Oster. <laughs> 
That's a good bunt by Ron and a good play by Martinez in getting off the mound, but uh, no chance at all to get O. Uh, you see Krenchicki come off the bag and make a kind of a swipe tag. Here's another look at it. Ball out over the plate and a perfect pitch to bunt third base side, and it was a good one, as we said, by Oster. Now, Joe, Ron Oster's at first base. John Denny just breezed through a perfect one, two, three, seventh inning, but he will now be removed for Cal Daniels. Well, I guess you have to wonder maybe that uh, he has told Pete that uh, he's uh, getting a little towered, and maybe. Uh, with Daniels we can produce another run here in the inning for him and get John uh, back on the winning side of the ledger. Well Daniels has been able to do that lately as a matter of fact in his last 10 pinch hit appearances he has six hits. And the last two times that we remember Joe he has produced doubles on each occasion. One here and the Reds would lead two nothing. So the day is done for John Denny. He pitched extremely well. He can only win this ball game that he leads one nothing now in the seventh. He has pitched six very strong innings. And talking things over with trainer Larry Starr. But Joe, it looks like he's pointing to his back that he might have a little irritation it back sure there. It sure does. Uh, or might might be just a little uh, stiffness in his back. Well, Denny will take a seat meantime. The guy at the plate, Cal Daniels, if you see anything different about Cal Daniels, it's that he has glasses. And those are new glasses that he has just picked up in the last 10 days. And Cal saying, went to Denver, found out I had a little bit of a vision problem. They gave me glasses. These are the new kind. I'll be getting the sports glasses when I get back to Cincinnati. 0 oh 1 the count. Martinez showing a pretty good move. As a matter of fact, he picked up eight base runners last year, and that was a club high for Baltimore. His previous best has been two. Daniels going the opposite way, but Brooks right there, and the quick toss gets Mr. Daniels, and that will do it for Cincinnati in the seventh. But they come up with the game's first run. And at the end of six and one half, it's Reds one, Expos nothing. John Denny has pitched the first six innings for Cincinnati in outstanding fashion with a one hitter, but removed because of uh, back troubles. And now Ron Robinson is called on. And Robbie, of course, you can see there, seven and zero oh and a fine two eighteen earned run average and six saves. Robbie. Overall, we'll be making uh, appearance number 34. He's worked 62 innings, allowing just 52 hits, and struck out 49 and walked 26. So a shot for Robbie to pick up his seventh save with three scoreless innings. We hope uh, to close out this game. Robinson jumps in there against Hubie Brooks, Tim Wallach, Wayne Krenchicki. And that means He's due for a hit because he's been able to do that this year. One hit in every three times to the plate, and this is his third. Two balls, no strikes. Brooks just keeps getting better and better. Leading hitter much of 1986 for the National League has improved each year of his sixth year in the major leagues. And he goes the opposite way. And that is a foul ball. Two balls and one strike. Matter of fact, Joe, last year when Hubie Brooks drove in 100 runs, that was the first time a shortstop has been able to accomplish that feat since Ernie Banks. We all know what a great hitting shortstop he was. I sure do. You threw him a few, huh? <laughs> I added to that total. <laughs> Brooks with a hard one to Oster, but he will simply be the first out of the seventh. I wouldn't imagine you'll tell Brenneman about uh, our little I would humor over here, will you? 
You don't want me to? I doesn't make any. You can't add anything to it anyway. Well, he'll he'll jump right on that. You know that. Who cares? <laughs> Would bother me a bit. I well, won't have to hear it. So what's the big deal? You know for 13 I mean? years, I'm sure you have heard more grief than he has heard about the same. I would imagine it's about even after all those dozen plus one. They never get on each other. That's one thing about us. They're always calm, cool. Never any embarrassing statements by either one of us. I mean, that's the way we are. Not one. Well, this man, Tim Wallach, has been embarrassed twice in the game, but both times by John Denny. Struck out in the second, in the fourth, and has the count Ron Robinson's way here in inning number seven one and two. See I've got you guys trained now. You haven't mentioned anything about a tie or anything. So it, how things kind of fade away. We figured it's the middle of summer. You are very deserving when the temperatures go up. We've seen you out there warming up the uh, has batters. To throwing... do with it. I think that just the mere fact that you uh, think we're mellowing out huh. I, I really think you will finally understand the two of you. <laughs> There's Wayne Krenchicki. He will follow. Probably hoping that Tim Walla can get on here. The so Reds are up over the Expos. one nothing in the seventh. Stays the same two balls and two strikes. Joe, you remember Pittsburgh? I gave you that Budweiser yeah, T-shirt. You've never worn that. It's back in my locker. Back in your locker in, in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Have you ever worn it? I know. I'm. I keep it protected. I'm afraid somebody might decide they want it. Robinson strikes out Tim Wallach and two down, and Tim is over three, all by way of strikeouts. Well, that was a pretty good curveball right there by Robbie. I'll tell you, not too many people are going to hit that one. Tim, you can see a little dis disgusted, but why? What's uh, this? This rascal just fell off the table to Wallach. He did ever. He has one of the fine curveballs on the red staff along with John Denny. One ball, no strikes to Wayne Krinchicki. Misses 2 0. Oh. So Montreal, they're 11 and a half games back. Of front running New York. If they lose this evening, it will be 12 and a half out. And Krinchicki with a pop up to straightaway center field, and Eddie Milner right there makes the catch, ending the inning. Ron Robinson, one, two, three versus Montreal. Reds one, Expos nothing at the end of seven. Since it Cincinnati leads Montreal 1-0 as we head to the eighth inning of play. I'm Steve Fiziok along with Marty Brenneman. And Marty, on the one <laughs> run the Reds scored, you would not believe what happened to Joe Nuxall. He is staring at the monitor, watching the shot from center field. The baseball is hit by Kurt Stilwell, and he thinks it's coming right back at him. He's underneath this thing. Wonders never cease to exist, my man, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, he followed that up by saying, I hope I'm ducking the rest of the evening, meaning the Reds would have base hits back up the middle. It's a thrill a minute. It is with Joe Nuxo and, and with Marty Brenneman. this game has been something else. One to nothing to score as we go to the top half of the eighth inning. Buck Rogers has made a couple of defensive changes. That's Al Newman, the new second baseman, and the new first baseman, really not a newcomer because he's been playing second all night long and just moves to first Vance Law. So for the Reds here in the top half of the eighth, it'll be Eddie Milner to lead it off. He'll be batting against a newcomer on the mound because that man, Dennis Martinez, is done for the night, but certainly pitched fine baseball. And we'll turn it over now to a left-hander. And like Martinez, a former American leaguer and left-hander Bob McClure. McClure with a no-win, one-loss record, making his 16th appearance with a 2.30 earned run average. And he starts Milner out with a high fastball. One ball, one strike, or make that two and oh the count, two and nothing the count on Milner, who has singled, grounded out, and doubled. Andy Milner and Ron Oster have each had two hit nights to account for a half of the Reds' hit total off Dennis Martinez. And 
hand off the end of the bat. It's two and two. What other little tidbits might have cropped up in the four innings that I had the misfortune of being away? Yes. Anything else occur uh, out of the ordinary? Joe Knoxell, he said in the dozen plus one years that you've been working together, he yeah. figures you guys are about even on digs. I don't, I wouldn't agree with that. I would say that I am ahead in well, that department. You had no defense. You were not I, here. I can tell you who I am ahead with you without any question. 362 <laughs> to 2 was the last time I uh, caught that. <laughs> Milner is out on strike. So a good start by Bob McClure. And he'll face another left-handed batter who now will turn around and bat right-handed. And that, of course, is Pete Rose. This is his second appearance in the series for the former Milwaukee Brewer. He was brought on by Buck Rogers to face Dave Parker in the ninth inning with the bases loaded on Thursday night. And Dave had a single to Senator drive in two. Only man who McClure faced. 4 1. So Pete electing to hit for himself in a game like this. He wants to save Tony Perez in the event that his services might be needed later on. And of course, Rose has had problems this season against left handers, although. In his defense, he's really not seen all that many of them. Only two for 14. There's a happy Perez. That bat is always with him in that dugout. Max Venable, you see the bat off to his right as he is seated next to Bill Gullickson, last night's winning pitcher. One ball, one strike. And Pete finds a hole as he singles back through the middle and Rose has his first hit tonight. And for Pete Rose that is base hit number 40 this season and that means 40 boxes of Nestle's Crunch going to the General Protestant Orphans Home. And here's a look at Pete Rose batting from the right side and collecting that base hit and upping his average from the right side right by Bob McClure and by Al Newman who was trying to stretch it out. One out, one on, and Dave Parker stands in now against Bob McClure after coming up with that hit we were talking about a moment ago Thursday night. Parker backing off as McClure goes into his stretch. Pitching line on Dennis Martinez, seven innings, eight hits and a run. He walked a batter and struck out four. So the starters were very, very impressive in this one. And there's the pitch that Martinez threw with tremendous success against Parker and McClure decides what the heck I might as well try it too. Right now Dennis the losing pitcher of record unless his team can come back. All one strike. And one pitch you were talking about that's the same pitch that Bob McClure jumped ahead on Dave Parker a couple of nights ago and then uh, against uh, said a couple of nights ago and then he came up and got the big base hit. Two balls in one strike. Dancing off the bag at first. Ran that pitch in on the hands, and he's even two and two. Parker's not had an easy night of it, although he did hit that bolt to center in the first inning. Has popped up twice. There's that look at that breaking ball, the last pitch. Rose running. Strikeout Parker. And Pete has his second stolen base of the year in as many attempts. Rose did have a good break and here's the throw by Dan Billardello. Boy Pete is right in there and you don't see him slide feet first very often this time he does and he's in there. So Rose picks his spots. And he picked the right time to go then and as Steve so aptly pointed out he had a huge jump on Bob McClure. Here's the kind of respect they have for Eric Davis. They're not going to give him a chance and it's not a matter of of walking a right handed hitter to get to a left handed batter. It's walking a right handed hitter to get to another right handed hitter. So the percentage is against Bob McClure either way. It's simply a matter of 
being overly concerned with what Davis can do with that bat. And while Buddy Bell is double and scored the game's only run tonight, they would rather take their chances with him than with Eric Davis. Two men on, two men out. Bell has struck out and lined to short before he wrapped that double to left in the seventh inning, and then it was Kurt Stillwell who brought him in with a base hit. Ball strike. Here's another pitcher who Buddy should be very familiar with after all the years he spent in the American League, and until McClure came from Milwaukee in the deal, he had never pitched in this league before. Something thrown out of the stands onto the field just as McClure released the pitch. Looks like an orange or. They, they do that in the Big Eight Conference when everybody gets ready to go to the Orange Bowl, but not up here. And uh, neither one of these teams are bidding for the Orange Bowl, I don't believe. Oh, really? <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, that, that. Laid one on me there. Uh -huh. Watch him as he throws and watch it explode. You really can't tell, but it hit just to the first base side of the mound. And uh, plate umpire Ed Montague has gone out, and now an, uh, an appropriate announcement is being made. And the plate umpires, you see Montague leaving, leaving the dugout and uh, now saying no pitch. He went over to the Montreal dugout, apparently to confer with Buck Rogers, the expo manager. And uh, even though he said did not indicate at the time the ball was thrown that the pitch would not count. He now has informed Buck Rogers and uh, Pete Rose out at second base hands on his hips being made aware of the fact that that pitch will not count and it was out of the strike zone. And Marty I think it may have been Fred Brocklander at second base who made the call Ed Montague had his back to the whole situation and probably finally saw that orange explode after the pitch was thrown. One ball one strike. Now, how could Montague have his back to the situation if he's facing the field? He's facing the field. The, the uh, orange is thrown from the dugout side, so it's okay. It's his right back shoulder. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> one one to Cow with Rose at second and Davis at first. And McClure working on Buddy Bell as he got that one over on the inside. You're getting very particular, huh? Well, I just know how he a plate umpire always faces a field and the thing did hit to the right of the mound right there in front of God in the world. But the mask takes away from that peripheral vision. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it's holding at a ball two strikes. Well, the Reds could sure use another run. Buddy Bell was a man who ignited things in the last inning and he could be a run producer here in the eighth if he can base hit McClure and get Rose in from second. Pete looking around as he backs off the bag and there's Davis over at first. Two and two. Milner struck out Rose singled stole second as Parker struck out they intentionally walked Davis. Will the strategy work we'll see. No, sir. Or will the patch be made? It's in there. Rose comes in to score, and Davis goes to third, and Bell gets the job done with an opposite field run scoring single, and Cincinnati leads it 2-0. Well, that indeed a very big base hit by number 25, Buddy Bell. And the question here was simply whether Andre Dawson could make this catch or not. We saw one trap that was ruled and out by George Wright and this one skipped a full two three feet in front of Andre Dawson. But by that time with two outs Rose was already around third base and Dawson had no play. I tell you Steve the two days off seemed to have helped Buddy Bell. He had two hits last night and has come up with a couple of hits tonight. And the ball gets away from Bill Ardello and Bell will trot into second. They'll probably wait to see the replay on that before they make the call. Pass ball, wild pitch. I'm betting on a wild pitch. It was in the dirt. Villardello was able to knock it down, not scoop it up. 
And they're calling it now a wild pitch. Ground ball. Backhanded. Good play by Al Newman, and he gets Stillwell to end the inning. Make that Butera. Sal bidding for a two-run single that well could have broken this game open, and Newman made a fine play. But in the inning, the Reds get a run on a couple of hits. Two men left, and at the middle of the eighth inning, the Reds two, and the Expos nothing. Bottom half of the eighth inning about to unfold. The Reds now lead by two runs with George Wright scheduled to lead it off against Ron Robinson, and Buck Rogers will go to his bench and bring on Mike Fitzgerald, a hit for Danny Billardello. Kurt Stillwell was a man robbed on that great play by Newman to keep the deficit at two and ended the Reds' eighth inning, and now it's George Wright heading toward the plate to face the Redhead, who retired the side in order in the seventh. Wright has struck out, he's drawn a walk, and has picked up his first National League stolen base. Reds have featured seven innings of one-hit baseball turned in by John Denny and Ron Robinson. And the pitch is over, call strike. Broken bat pop-up played by Stillwell for the out. Now Fitzgerald will pinch it. Mike will no doubt be behind the plate to catch the offerings of one Jay Tibbs in the series wrap-up here tomorrow. As a pinch hitter, you see, and that's simply because more often than not, he's behind the plate when the game starts. Batting 285, six home runs, and 36 RBIs, and that latter number represents a career high. Strike one. Uh, Dan Villadella, who now takes a seat. Before the ball game, he was saying, you never hate for anybody to get injured, but right now that's the only way we may be able to get back in this National League East race. The way the Mets are yeah. just riding high. They'd be 12 and a half out. Well, you know, of all the clubs in the league, and it never fails. You'll always have one that seems to be more fortunate than others, but the Mets have really been lucky. I mean, they've kept their key people healthy. They have not had any devastating injuries to to anybody and when you have that going for you plus you have the great abundance of talent that they possess in all areas it's been a whale of a year that's all for Fitzgerald and Robbie takes care of him on a minimum of three pitches and gets him with a high fastball we'll pause five seconds for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds television network Two nothing Reds bottom of the eighth two down Robinson has popped up right to shortstop he has struck out pitch hitter Fitzgerald and here's Al Newman second baseman batting for the first time tonight. A Looks strike. like Robbie's really got it going again doesn't it. Well he's had he's not been on the mound since last Monday night when he was roughed up by the Mets even though he picked up that win. That should be another perfect inning for him. The shore fielding still well, and that's all for Montreal. Three men up, three men down. That means we go to the ninth inning. Happy to report the Reds lead the Expos 2 0. A metal tool. John Hurt. Anastasia Kinski. Cat People. Monday night at 8 on TV 41. It's the top of the ninth inning with the Reds leading by a couple of runs, and there's your modern-day version of the thinker. Danny Billardello striking a pretty glum pose there after being lifted for pinch hitter Mike Fitzgerald. And now it's Sal Butera leading off the ninth inning. Sal one for three, a double in the fifth. Hit the ball hard again in the seventh, but had the misfortune of hitting into a double play and hits this one hard. And rain. Does a tumbling act, but hangs on. One out. Now 
Contact made and made good by Butera, but here comes Tim Raines and goes skidding on that AstroTurf to pick it off. So Sal will have a one for four night to mull over, but contentment in the sense that he hit the ball hard three times up. Oster looking for his third hit. Ronnie, after collecting four hits in the series opening win over the Mets on Monday night, got his average up to 250. It then dropped back into the 240s, but with two hits tonight, he's again at 250 for the season. 0-2 against Bob McClure. Ron Robinson on deck. A ball. And a foul keeps it at a ball and two strikes. This is one of those nights where, and all clubs have them during the course of the season, you collect a lot of hits and you really don't have a whole lot to show for it. The Reds have had 10 hits off of Martinez and McClure, two runs, but the pitching has been such that Montreal has not been able to cross the plate. Two balls, two strikes. be played by Newman. Oster grounds out and Ron Robinson will bat with two down. Robbie 0 for the season. He's been up 11 times. Well, he'll make contact for the most part. He has struck out only three of those 11 official at bats. Ball one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you chuckling about? <laughs> <laughs> Roy Alfred's just had a good line in our ear. Well, let's see if Dawson will get it. Not only will Andre fail to run it down, but Vance Law couldn't get there, so it's one ball, one strike. Tell me, what are you going to do over the All Star break? Sherry and Ashley and Sherry's mom and dad, John and Gloria Robinson, and I were all going to Lake Cumberland, right outside of Jamestown. Do it every year. Look forward to it. I can't tell you how much I look forward to it. Have offers to drive me down, to, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass on that. It is a absolute paradise. If you've never been there, boy, I'll tell you, one of the prettiest spots on the face of this earth. Well, it looks like I'm outdoing you. <laughs> really? Two and two. I'm in a ribs eating contest against Anthony Munoz of the Cincinnati Bengals. You'll lose. There's a base hit. The Ronnie Robinson makes it one for 12 on the year as he grounds Bob McClure dead up the middle. The Reds have number 11. You got no chance there, pal. <laughs> You're telling me. Well, here is Ron Robinson's first base hit of 1986 and Bob McClure saying, whoa, where's that going? Has to do a little back bend to get out of the way. And Robbie is now one for 12 this year. Eddie Milner, that means he'll bat for the second time against Bob McClure, and the first time he was called out on strikes leading off the eighth. And he takes a strike here in the ninth. Tracy Jones has also been invited to be in it, but he told me today he doesn't think he'll be able to because that is a day he would like to get his thoughts together. Well, there's probably another reason, too. He might get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he may get hurt eating ribs. He has broken seven bones in his life. He has taken nothing but grief from Pete Rose. <laughs> well, I, he's a funny man. He though. is hilarious. Tracy Jones is just naturally comical. Oh, my goodness. Billy DeMars is talking about him umpiring because Tracy was saying, hey, the only way I can keep away from injury is to perhaps be an umpire. <laughs> Newman chances again here in the ninth and takes care of things to end Milner's tenure at the plate and, and Cincinnati's ninth inning. No runs, one hit with a man left on, and now after eight and a half, the Reds got to hold them. They lead 2 nothing. Reds 2, Expos nothing. The Reds are three outs away from making it two straight after losing the series opener on Thursday night, and uh, that's the man who 
over two innings has been perfect with a capital P. In fact, the Expos have not had a base runner since George Wright with one out in the fifth inning threw a base on balls while John Denny was on. Since that time, 11 in a row have been set down, but if Robbie is going to be able to successfully close it out, he's going to have to do it against some of the good ones in the Montreal attack, most notably Tim Raines standing in front of Wallace Johnson, who will be a pinch hitter after Raines leads off the ninth for Montreal. A win tonight would equal the number of victories that Pete Rose was hoping for. When this road trip started, he said, I'd be thrilled to death with seven. Would even accept six and five. Well, that's already a lock. And three outs away from making it seven with a chance to make it eight tomorrow. Rain says the only Expos hit. He single in the third inning. Fastball missing. And it's one ball, one strike. and trying to pick up his seventh save. Ball two. The Reds bullpen as a unit have a total of 21 and Franco and Robinson have all but one of them. The other one owned by Ted Power. Two balls and two strikes against the all-star Tim Rain. And there will not be a play for Buddy Bell on that ball, although he gives chase and runs out of sight. So it holds on range two and two. Well, you look back over the course of this game at uh, all the defensive plays that have been made and everything has been routine. Parker coming hard and we'll have to play it on the bounce. So it's a two hit night for Montreal and both go on the hit column of Mr. Rain. Take a look at it again. 2 2 the count. Robbie brings it up there. Range just went after it. Parker very wisely pulled up on that ball and not a step too soon. If he'd been any closer, he stood a chance of having that ball bounce over his head, and Lord knows where Range might have ended up. So you saw Range and Rose visiting and Parker gesturing. And now Wallace Johnson will pinch it for Vance Law. Johnson without a hit and four times up since being brought out of the Montreal farm system. He was playing at Indianapolis. And to no surprise, Johnny Franco has started up. One strike on Johnson. One ball and one strike. Now looking at their batting order, you've got Dawson, a right-handed batter. Brooks the same, as is Wallach. You don't get to a left-handed hitter. Well, you got the pitcher batting in the number six position. There goes Reigns. The pitch is fouled off, and he'll have to come back. Of course, when you have to make a decision on whether or not you want to bring Johnny Franco on, it doesn't make a great deal of difference, as Pete pointed out in a visit with him in his office earlier this evening here at the stadium. 
Johnny is one of those pitchers who you really are not concerned about playing the percentages with. He's got that good screwball. He's got a better than average fastball, good location, good change, and so I don't think Pete would hesitate to bring him on. It wouldn't make any difference who might be hitting. There's a big strikeout on Johnson, and Robbie got him with unadulterated gas. That's a third strikeout for Robinson. He just simply blew Wallace Johnson away. Got that fastball down and he had no chance. Here's a hawk, Andre Dawson. 0 for 3 tonight was on in the first after hitting into a force play and picked up a stolen base. Well, they had Reigns running and they got him running again and again he's got to come back as a result of that foul ball. Well, you might be saying it's kind of unusual strategy being employed by Buck Rogers being two runs down in the ninth inning but Consider the fact one Reigns has a total of 41 or 40 stolen bases. Consider also that if he steals second and he's only been caught four times all year, you take away the possibility of a game ending double play. So it's really not bad strategy at all when you've got a Tim Reigns on your ball club and a good pickup by Butera. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. Bottom of the ninth. Reigns about to hit him 11 to 2 and about scored him 2 nothing. Strike two call. There goes Reigns and a swing and a miss and the throw to second not in time. So Dawson is struck out. And Reigns picks up his 41st stolen base. Reigns took off on this breaking ball and that was all she wrote for Dawson. And Butera didn't have much of a chance at all of throwing Reigns out. the Expos down to their final bat and this is in a lot of cases a situation where a hitter goes up and if he's not dead on the thought of hitting a home run I guarantee you it is passed through his mind Brooks not which well he's got 14 home runs this season and Robbie comes high with a heater that's the kind of pressure Robinson works under here in the ninth after giving up the leadoff single to Reigns especially in going up against a guy like Andre Dawson and Robbie beat him with a strikeout. You worry about that home run ball one ball one strike. And the one one pitch. Strike two call. Robbie trying again. Sounded like Brooks broke his bat, but apparently not. Count stays at a ball, two strikes. Tim Raines at second, two outs. And swung on and missed. Butera picks it up, completes a game-ending strikeout, and this one belongs to the Reds. A combined two-hit shutout from John Denny and from Ron Robinson. 
as the Reds come up with their second in a row here in Montreal and their seventh in the ten games played on this road trip. They combined to knock off the Montreal Expos tonight by a final score of two to nothing. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. That's the final here at Olympic Stadium tonight as the Reds make it a 2-0 shutout victory behind the pitching of John Denny for six and from Ron Robinson for three. Robbie outstanding after giving up the ninth inning leadoff hit to Tim Raines. He then struck out the next three to record his seventh save of the year. And John Denny, of course, picks up his sixth win. Our Old Spice play of the game, well, it was the first run of the night. And it was uh, Buddy Bell and, and uh, Kurt Stilwell hooking up after Bell had let off with a double. Three and two pitch to the rookie shortstop. And this line drive single back through the middle that got Bell scampering in from second base. George Wright coming up with the ball, making the play at the plate. But Buddy Bell going in sliding with the run that was the first of the night. Broke up quite a pitcher's duel involving Dennis Martinez and, uh, of course, John Denny. And that was our Old Spice play of the game. 2-0 final score as the Reds won it as the Expos collect only two hits tonight. They had the single by Tim Raines early and then of course a base hit by Raines in the ninth inning at which point as I pointed out Robbie came up with three big strikeouts to pick up his seventh save of the year. Steve Fiziak is on the field and Ron Robinson is with him. Steve. Robinson. Well, it just, uh, you know, it happens that I haven't thrown in a while, and I felt pretty good, and uh, I want to improve on last performance. I didn't do too hot in uh, New York, and uh, I'm a better pitcher than that, so I had something to prove out here, and I uh, threw pretty good. You want to be able to keep that ball down to those guys, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to keep it away so they don't tie it up, you know, because Reigns is on base, but uh, everything felt pretty good when I got my hit, so I felt pretty good. Yeah, only, you know, that's only my third hit, so, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, something that I uh, just like to have, you know, the hits, that, they're coming, but, uh, you know, that's something that I don't really uh, concern myself too much about, because the pitching's the main part. Let me ask you this, John Franco, who's your roommate, he made the all-star team, and Pete Rose was hoping that he would have two, Ron Robinson and John Franco. You have a 7-0 and record, and that clearly shows it, Ron, perhaps you should have been there. Well, you know, that's... You know, that's a hard decision. I mean, John has two. Uh, this is his second uh, consecutive good year, and uh, I wish him the best. I, you know, heard there were some negative things in the paper, and you know, John's part of my family, and I, you know, I wish him the best. I hope he strikes everybody out, and uh, he's my roommate, and you know, he has one free ticket. Besides himself, <laughs> he could take me, but uh, you know, I wish John the best. You know, I, I've had a good season so far, and uh, I just want to continue. And we, the Reds want to continue winning, so we can get it back up there. Does it help that he's your roommate because you see him do well and you go out and say, hey, I want to be like that too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's that's part of it, you know. And now, you know, he's he's doing real well. I can't, you know, he's he's my roommate. You know, you can't say enough about him. He's a great guy, and, uh, you know, I get along with him real well. I wouldn't be rooming with him if I didn't. But, uh, you know, he's a, he has a special place in my heart. And uh, I went to, to his mother's funeral, and he said, he's, you know, this year's for his mother. You know, who can knock that? I mean, you know, he's playing for his mother. Ron, congratulations on another great game tonight. Thanks a lot, Steve. Ron Robinson gets the save tonight, and he really had an outstanding performance as the Reds win over the Montreal Expos, 2-0 the final score. Robinson and Franco have really been the two big guns out of the Reds' bullpen this year. Let's now go upstairs to Marty Brenneman. Thank you, Steve. Some pertinent numbers you might be interested in. The shutout tonight, the fourth of the year, authored by Cincinnati Pitching, and the first since the 4th of June when Tom Browning fired a one-hit shutout to beat the Chicago Cubs at Riverfront Stadium. As far as the win is concerned, the Reds are now four under, 40 and 44, and only one half game behind fourth place Atlanta. You heard the comments of Ron Robinson. How about the young man who had the game-winning RBI, shortstop Kurt Stilwell? Steve? Marty Kurt Stilwell has three game-winning RBIs this year. This number three today, and it had to feel good to punch that ball back over the middle, Kurt. It really did. Um, I didn't expect to be here right now, you know, get back so soon, but really felt good to come back and contribute and help the team. Kurt, you were telling me you had your eyes examined back in Denver, was it? Well, <laughs> I found out it wasn't my eyes that, you know, the reason why I wasn't hitting, but um, that was good to know. I was just curious, and uh -huh. I guess it was a dry air in Denver. It was drying out my eyes a little bit and wasn't picking up the ball. Might have been the lights, too. You like it back up here a little oh, better, don't dude, you? Yeah, this is the place to be. Tell me about 
the way you're, you're playing defense right now. You, you're playing a confident shortstop. Well, yeah, I am. It's, the turf helps a lot. I, I like the turf, and it just makes me more, that more aggressive. And um, when you go down to the minor leagues, you really, really, it really opens your eyes to what you know you got here, and uh, it's just nice to field on a nice field. Good to see you, okay. and good game tonight. Kurt Stowell, who the game-winning RBI this evening over the Montreal Expos. Let's now go back upstairs with a happy Marty Brenneman. Back-to-back -back victories after the series opener here Thursday night. The Reds had a three-game winning streak broke when they lost that game to the Expos on Thursday. They'll try for a three-game winning streak in the final game of this 11-game road trip tomorrow afternoon. The Reds are now 7-3. and three. They'd like to close it at the break at 8-3. and three. Once again, the final score from Olympic Stadium tonight, the Reds 2 and the Expos nothing. For Joe Nuxall and Steve Fiziak, this is Marty Brenneman saying so long, everybody. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Bud Light, the light beer with a first name and taste. Everything else is just...